move to um, public comment on, oh, sorry, um, we have to approve the agenda, sorry. And I would like to move to actually amend the agenda to um, reflect uh, that Lisa will be talking about the second interim financials as well as the January financials. That would be item 6B, review and approval of the January financials. And we just want to add the second interim report onto that. So I would move to amend the agenda to reflect that. Um, I second. Thanks, Cornell. Um, Christy? I, I have a question. Um, is Do we need to have the interim report approved tonight? That's a Lisa question, I guess. Um, it does, I guess it doesn't have to be approved tonight. I mean, it's the same information as the January financials, so. Exactly. Yeah. Totally get it. I'm just, um, just to, that we're, you know, I know we're, we're just super cautious about these things. And I just, if we don't have to approve it tonight, I think we probably should just push it to the next meeting and have it on the agenda. Okay. Sure. We can just approve the, <clears throat> okay, the sorry. financials. Great. So um, then I'll move to approve the agenda as is. Second. Thanks, Byron. Uh, Cornell? Approve. Christy? Approve. Ernesto? Approve. Angeline? Approve. Thanks, everybody. Now we will move to... <clears throat> public comment on any items on the agenda. Would anyone like to comment? If there are no comments, we'll move to non-agenda public comment. Any comments that are not on the agenda? Okay, we'll move to item four, items for consent. Um, we would be approving the minutes from our last meeting on January 19th. Does anyone need to take these off the consent agenda for discussion? Okay, I would move to approve the items uh, for consent or the item for consent. Second. Um, thanks, Cornell. Christy? Approve. <coughs> Ernesto? Approve. Byron? Approve. Angeline? Approve. Thank you. And moving on to reports, um, first up are, actually this should say executive <laughs> director's report. Uh, Katie, wanna take it away? Sure, hi everybody. Um, so it's a busy time of year. We have our lottery happening tomorrow evening for uh, open enrollment for next year. Um, we added some extra info sessions to meet the needs of all the parents that are interested in the school. So we did one yesterday. Um, and yeah, we're really excited to be hosting our lottery from the Boys and Girls Club tomorrow via Zoom, of course. And um, so just been running test lotteries and making sure everything's ready to go. Um, we finished all our re-enrollment of our current students for next year. And um, obviously have been working on the whole COVID protection plan and the um, safety plan in order to prepare to reopen and serve students who want to attend school in person soon. So, um, you know, making sure our facilities ready. Um, we had a visit from the LA County Department of Public Health today to inspect our facility. And um, she 
<laughs> she actually really liked it. She's like, I've been visiting a lot of schools. She's like, I want my child to go to a school like this. She's like, I really like these, the wood desks and cushions. And of course, all our hand sanitizer and sinks and <laughs> outdoor classrooms too. So anyway, um, we got the seal of approval there. And um, yeah, just putting some finishing touches. So that's what's going on on campus. Thanks, Katie. Um, if anyone has any questions about that, can I have questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, Ms. Cornell, um, Katie, how's the re-enrollment going? Are we getting most people to come back? Yes, we have very strong re-enrollment. Um, I think we had a couple of people have moved, um, are, you know, moving out of state as a result of the pandemic. So a few people, you know, due to moving, but otherwise, um, you know, I'd say 98% re-enrollment rate. <laughs> oh, that's great. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? What's the uh, level of people that have opted in for the reopening plan, or are we going to discuss that later on the... Um, we had a very strong uh, <laughs> desire of people to have their children attend in person with our hybrid plan. So um, let's see. I could pull up the numbers, but yeah, running mean, roughly off the top of my head, percentage. you know, third grade, every single person wants to come back in person. Um, and I think 14 of the 18 first graders, I think uh let's see second grade was i think only two opted out and then um kindergarten it was around 85 percent of everyone re-enrolled so one class there were a few more people you know wanting to stay in distance learning but overall um yeah it was definitely you know we had surveyed people previously and this was a huge shift to yeah wanting people yeah. to be in person yeah wow okay All right, um, shall we move on to Lisa? Hey guys, uh, uh, can I share my screen? Yeah. I don't have rights, so. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, right. Let's see. Hold on one sec. Got okay. it. Thanks. Can everybody see the dashboard in front of them? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So we are at our second interim. Every year, the, um, the schools have to do a first interim report to their authorizer and to the state, a second interim, and then their annual report, which is the final year-end unaudited actuals. Uh, this is second interim. It goes through January. So the, the reports that you're looking at are getting reported to the state through their software. And at the end of this packet, there's a um, you can see that report and how it matches to this dashboard. So I just, I'll show you at the end of this, but for now, just know that this is, uh, our financials trued up through January 31st, going to the state as they are. Uh, at the top, you can see obviously our ADA versus our budget is still in the red, but it's gonna stay that way because we, you know, COVID. Uh, but it, we're, <laughs> we're still doing okay. Our net income is in the green. We have cash on hand. Our year in, in cash is red, but it's not, uh, it's not desperate, you know, it, it's actually better than I expected. And when I get down there, I'll show you. Um, we have 117 students, and that's what we're forecasting out. Uh, I'm going to go down here to the income statement. So right here is your income statement. We're, we're projecting 1.6 in revenue and 1.56 in uh, expenses, leaving us with a net income of $47,000, which is good considering our original budget said 3.3 right here in blue. So the variance of 44,000. Um, you can see that this this section right here is what's changed since last um, board meeting. And you can see that the fundraising has gone up by $17,000 since we last looked at it. 
uh, all together right now, our grants and fundraising are um, forecasting at 62000 uh, that's how much we've actually received. So it could be more than that, but I don't like to um, forecast unless we actually have it. So right now, or as of January 31st, it, we were at about 62000 in fundraising. So that is good. Uh, I'm going to go down here to the balance sheet. I wanted to point out this 300000 301000 This is uh, what we are forecasting that we will be uh, that will sit on our balance sheet as revenue that we have not received as of 6.30 of 21. It will be due to us from the state. And what that is, is origin last month, if you look at the dashboard, it, it was at like 485000 This month, it's at 301000 because uh, El Rio was able to get a waiver on the deferrals for um, the last four months of uh, fiscal year 2021. So you remember that that was a major concern. We were applying to get a waiver on the deferrals because we're a new school and we don't have any of the COVID funding coming our way and all that. So this was a big help in our cash at the end of the year. Um, does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about that? No. Okay. So our projected end of the year cash is 110,000. Um, that will, in, that, that, We'll have it. It'll look uh, reserve at 7%, which is good. Uh, it'll be because we received, you know, the $250,000 uh, revolving loan, which um, El Rio is very lucky to be getting that because uh, there are several small schools that didn't have enough enrollment to even get the second half of their revolving loan. But you guys are in good shape for that. So that's still in the forecast. What else? I think that's about it. Um, as far as changes from last time we all talked, does anybody have any questions? Or Katie, do you have anything to add that I might have missed? No, I think you I think you summed it up nicely. Okay. So let me just quickly show you. Such good news. All good news. I know. You know, I feel really happy for you guys about this because we've definitely been worried, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> new schools, this is such a hard time to open. But um, so you've got your financial analysis. Oh, uh, the check register. Uh, let's take a quick look at that. Um, this is the check register from January. Let's see if the, anybody has any questions on anything that's going on here. Can I ask you a question? It's yes, answer. please. Um, so I saw up there in your previous slide that the um, expenses are a lot lower than we budgeted. Um, I think like on the top. Um, yeah, right here. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's your, uh, like, how, how does that happen? Like, how does that happen? Well, we haven't been in at the school. Okay. Right? I mean, that's part of it. Um, let me just open my notes here so I can look at the actual variance reasons. Also, that will change after this month because we've been now getting things in order to serve students in person. Well, I don't think it's going to change because we've already forecasted that's part of our budget, I believe. Well, Unless a little bit, I guess. I yeah. mean, a little bit in that um, I think we shifted some funding. I mean, I guess it won't change our expenses, but it'll shift in how they're allocated because I think we moved a lot to um, capitalize. Yeah, capitalize yeah. equipment. And then now we're shifting them back to, you know. Okay. So I'm sorry, I don't know who asked that question, but I do want to share um, on the notes on the second page, you'll be able to see exactly what has changed. So our certificated salaries are about $38,000 lower. And, and here is all the reasoning why we didn't put in the Mandarin or the Spanish. Uh, two of the teachers are newer than what we expected to pay. Uh, the $35,000 difference for certificated is the RSP teacher is being... Um, Paid uh, is we didn't hire an RSP teacher. We're doing it through cross country, the special ed consultant we use. Um, so, no, sorry. yeah. Are you are you actually showing a screen right now? Oh, you can't. I know it's because I didn't start this Zoom meeting. I have to reshare every time I oh, put up something that. new. Oh, it's totally my fault. Sorry. So anyway, on the notes you can see I've I've separated it by certificated classified supplies, operating expenses, everything, and why it's changed so much. Um, mm. so the certificated is $40,000 lower. The classified is $10,000 lower. This, um, 
the supplies. The reason that this is 76,000 lower is because we moved a lot of equipment, like all the new computers and iPads we bought. We had originally uh, put them to cap uh, uncapitalized equipment, but because we bought them in bulk, we were able to capitalize and spread the expense over um, five years for the equipment. So that has a lot to do with it. It doesn't change the fact that we've put a lot of cash out, but it does, uh, in, in an account, accounting treatment, it changes our expenses. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Just uh, don't realize what you guys have seen and what you haven't. So this should be very thorough for your understanding. Um, I'm going to put that back. I'm going to go over to... I'm going to reshare and go back to the board packet. Okay. Um, so in the packet, okay, can you guys see the check register now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions on that? Most of these are um, standard monthly payments. Um, the 7300 for SPED, that is the outside services that I was just referring to, the RSP and any of the special ed um, costs that we didn't, we aren't paying salary for, we're paying it to an outside services. No? Okay. I'm going to move down to the credit card expenses. Next page. Just showing the different curriculum we've bought on the credit card. And then monthly subscriptions, mostly for uh, either office software or um, uh, recruitment for, for uh, the lottery. This is the very detailed cash flow forecast, which you're welcome to peruse. Um, if anybody ever wants me to go over that in detail, I'm certainly well, uh, willing. And then on the last page here, you'll see the... Um, First interims, second interims. Uh, we're not going to go over them. We'll go over them at the next board meeting. Just know that the uh, figures are exactly what you're looking at for January. So that is all I have to present in the way of the finances. Um, mostly good news. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering, like, in terms of fundraising, I don't know if we're going to talk about that at, at agenda. Not, I don't have it in front of me, but do, like, do we need to raise a bunch more money? Like, because everything's so positive right now. Like, huh. I, so I think we're still we're still on track for the same fundraising goals that we've discussed, you know, the whole time that yeah. that has not changed. And, you know, we're anticipating having to raise, I'm hoping that we raise the same amount of, of money in the second semester that we were able to raise in the first semester. Yeah, it would always be helpful because, um, you know, I think we've got everything in the forecast that we need, but because you guys are reopening, things could come up that we don't know about or that, you know, you don't know about even, you know, uh, this is the first time you've opened. And so we think we've got everything in here, but there's possibilities of not. So you, I don't think you want to take the, I don't want to put the brakes on fundraising at all um, it, because it's still, <laughs> you know, I mean, it looks nice. We're doing better. It's great, but you know, anything can happen, you know, especially with state funding. If they run out, then they, they'll just hold it. You know, it's only happened once <laughs> a long time ago, but <laughs> we we were scarred by it. So. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, I will stop. That's just for Lisa. Questions regarding budget. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, absolutely. Um, moving on to facilities. Everything is pretty much good to go at the site. We are... Um, we are good. We are getting some pop-up tents <laughs> ready to go for our outdoor classrooms. Uh, the modulars are up and running. All the work uh, on them has been completed and we are, we're good to go on all of the inspections and everything, everything passed. So we're good. Um, there's not much of a facilities report today. There's still some outstanding stuff that 
can be done by parents and um, we're having, you know, a lot of little things done to get the site ready to go for in person, but by and large, we're good. So that's exciting. Um, I don't have much of a facilities report for you because everything is, is good on that front. Um, does anyone have any questions about facilities? I, I guess I'm, it's not really a facility sort of, and maybe everyone else already knows this and I missed it. Um, when is the, when are, when are you expecting to bring students back? Um, we are bringing kindergarten back the week of March 8th and uh, the following week we'll be bringing first through third back. So March 15th. Very exciting. Yep. Very based exciting. On, based on our approval of our um, plan <laughs> and submission to the state. <laughs> yes. The seat, we'll, we'll get more into that when we talk um, COVID prevention program. Um, we can go into how we're bringing kids back and all the measures that we're taking um, when we get into the review of the CPP. Um, anyone else have any facilities questions or shall I turn it over to Christy? All right, Christy, take it away. Ad hoc executive evaluation committee report. <laughs> Okay, well, Cornell, please chime in too. We, we have had um, really just gotten started with the process. Um, I think we all agreed that we would, um, we're contributing. Um, Antoinette had some resources from her work and I have some from mine. And so we are in the process of sharing those um, evaluations that have been used in other schools and settings. Um, at the executive level and trying to kind of pull something from them that will be um, the right fit for El Rio. Um, and Cornell has offered to, to help kind of pull from those resources to put something together. I'm still working on getting um, some of the previous ones from Ocean. And we, we also have ones from outside of the educational setting, but that are small organizations um, that are uh, aligned. So um, uh, we, we are at the beginning, I would say, and I think we um, have the goal to get, you know, at least whether it's a draft or, um, you know, something together for the board for feedback, um, ideally by the next meeting. Um, that would be the goal that may or may not be realistic. <laughs> Cornell, do you ever want to add anything? No, I think we can do it by the next meeting. Uh, we just got to consolidate the, the various forms that we have. And then, uh, yeah, I think we can do it by the next meeting. All right. You're optimistic. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, anyone have any questions? All right, so we'll move on to our items for discussion. Um, item A, the review and approval of the administrative revision materials. So um, as you all may know, LAUSD has granted an administrative revision to us. Um, and that um, is just regarding the restructuring, the org restructure. Um, they asked to see a revised charter petition um, that just reflects the new organizational structure, as well as the revised HR protocols that you have found in your board packet. Um, those two things will be submitting to LAUSD um, for their approval. Um, and right now we are going to be reviewing and approving them as well. Um, the changes that were made in the charter petition um, just concern roles and responsibilities um, and basically consolidating 
the two co-director roles into one executive director role. So anywhere in the charter petition that said co-directors, it now says executive director. And as you saw in the, um, in the board materials, I put a, um, basically a redlined PDF in there so everybody can see where the changes are. But they're basically, um, you know, there's not a substantive change anywhere other than titles. Um, we moved the um, operations director roles and responsibilities primarily to um, Katie's role as executive director. Um, and then the operations manager role um, was revised to reflect um, a more managerial level uh, set of responsibilities, roles and responsibilities more aligned. Um, and the office manager stayed pretty much the same. Um, the new org chart is in there as well that we approved at our last meeting. And that's pretty much it. That is the, the substance of the revision to the charter petition. And then the HR protocols um, <clears throat> are basically everything that was already in our employee handbook. Um, so just reiterating um, everything that we already had in place, but then we also put in a checklist um, that's really clear, um, steps to be taken for all new hires, and we can just go down the list. And obviously, Katie is going to be overseeing all of this. Um, she is the executive director, and she has primary oversight on this. And um, the operations manager remains the custodian of records, but Katie will be reviewing, <clears throat> as you can see, all documentation from steps one to four is reviewed by the executive director. <coughs> so it seems very robust to me and very clear um, in ways that it, it needed to be made more clear. So um, I feel good about where we're at. Um, does anyone have any questions about the changes that were made or the administrative revision? I think it looks good. Great. Yeah, I think it looks great. Great. I mean, we had we had done a lot of this work prior um, in prior board meetings. So this is just a reflection of the work that we have been doing the last couple of months. And now we just need to submit it to LAUSD and they can review it and hopefully approve it and we will be good to go. Um, so if no one has any other questions about these two items, I would move to approve um, the revised charter petition and the HR protocols. A second. Thanks, Christy. Um, Cornell? Oh, Crystal just joined us. Sorry, Crystal. Approve. Cornell, you approve. Ernesto? Right. <clears throat> Ernesto, are you there? Did we lose Ernesto? He's still on. But... He is still on, and he just spoke a oh, moment ago. Uh, approve. Sorry, I don't know why that it wouldn't <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to talk. Approve. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, Byron? Approve. Angeline? Approve. Thanks, everybody. Um, so we are um, already heard about moving on to item B. We heard about uh, and reviewed the January financials. I think we just need to approve them. So I would move to approve the January financials that we just took a look at. I'll second Again. Oh, sorry. Thanks, <laughs> Ernesto. I think that was Ernesto. Crystal? Approve. Cornell? Approve. Christy? Approve. 
Byron? Approve. Angeline? Approve. Thanks, everybody. Um, moving on to um, El Rio's COVID prevention program. So <clears throat> as folks might know, there has been a lot of, <laughs> a lot of different iterations uh, of what we need to provide to both the state and the Department of Public Health. Um, the latest version is this COVID prevention program. And it is um, a document that we have been working on and revising in, in various iterations um, for the last few months. Um, when we first established the, the COVID task force, we put together a whole document that was back in, I think, December or even November. Um, but now they're asking for this COVID prevention program. So it's basically just going through all of the different protocols, who has um, the authority and responsibility, um, chain of command, the, you know, reopening schedule, um, how we're going to identify COVID hazards, um, how employees are participating and how employees are protected. Um, everything from our screening protocols to physical distancing, mask wearing, um, how we have maximized our um, facility to be as safe as possible, our cleaning and disinfecting um, protocols, hand sanitizing, um, PPE, um, and then of course the exposure management plan um, and the compliance team that's responsible for um, making that happen. So I'm just gonna go over a, a few things, um, like top line items. Um, first of all, as you all know, we are doing on-site testing. Um, that has already started happening. Um, weekly testing with CoVerify. Um, we are having everybody working on site be tested every week. And we are also asking that all students who are returning to school take an initial COVID test um, before they come to school. And then after that initial COVID test, we'll be testing surveillance testing 25% of the student population every week. Um, that's just a recommended best practice. So CoVerify comes on site, they set up, um, we get all of the vials, we spit into the tubes. Um, it's all facilitated by a nurse. And then all the results are, are delivered directly to the Department of Health. If there are any positive cases, it goes straight to the Department of Health. And all, their whole portal is HIPAA compliant. So results can be sent you know, directly to families and directly to employees. So that's great. And that's already in process. Um, as Katie told you, the Department of Health, we asked the Department of Health to come to the site to just walk through and give us any feedback. Um, they were really positive. They thought the site looked great. Um, they gave us a couple of small things to, you know, a couple of things that we hadn't yet done, like install the hand sanitizer stations in the portable classrooms. That's obviously going to be done, but felt really good that the Department of Health signed off on that. Um, we have janitorial staff coming every morning to do cleaning. Um, everybody is going to be screened every day. Um, kids coming on site are not even getting out of their cars. That's all valet drop off and pick up. Kids are going to be temperature checked in their car. They'll get their mask on. They'll come out. Um, our cohorts the cohort model is you know the small group model so we're going to have between I believe um, six and 14 uh, students per group it kind of ranges depending on the class and how many kids opted in but um, that group that small group is going to be with two adults that's the max um, so those are our small groups and obviously physical distancing. We've set up outdoor classrooms everywhere. Um, every class has outdoor space as well as inside space. I think there's gonna be a mix on the schedule. We have a mix of indoor outdoor with primarily outdoor. 
for every class. Um, we've had the HVAC cleaned. There's new filters, filtration system on the HVAC. Every classroom has a air purification, a air, you know, a standalone air purifier. Um, what else am I leaving out here, Katie? Um, we're providing masks to anyone who doesn't have them. Um, in terms of the, uh, let's see, communications to everyone, up, you know, people know to stay home when sick. The screening process um, obviously takes away some of that. So if anyone is showing symptoms, they're not coming to school or they're not going to be allowed on campus. Um, what else do we have in here? Sorry, just going through here. Hand sanitizing, we have all these, now we have multiple sinks, hand washing stations, um, a schedule for bathroom use. Um, and then our exposure management plan, obviously we're a small school, we have a small team. So Katie and I are <laughs> doing our best to make that really clear to people that everybody just gets in touch with Katie if they've had any exposure. Um, if there's a case, we obviously shut, shut down any area that has the exposed individual has been and gets deep cleaned. We have an isolation area, which is outside a quarantine area, which we have a little sign for quarantine area. Um, I feel like we are really ready to go. Um, and this document is very, very thorough. Um, it also gives you lots of appendices to, um, you know, fill out for various different, uh, should anything happen, basically. Um, so does anyone have any questions about this document? Sorry I, if I was not all that clear. There's a lot to cover in here. Looks like you guys have been super thorough. Hopefully. Yeah, it sounds like a really well thought out plan. And uh, Katie, how, how are the teachers feeling? The teachers are feeling really good. Um, I, they really liked our um, on-site testing that we started last week. Everyone feels really good about that happening each and every week. And with the um, testing every child who opted in as a baseline and then doing 25% mm -hmm. every week, they feel like that's going to really make a difference to keep people safe. And I think our emphasis on being outdoors is also making um, I think teachers feel really good because the research really supports that being um, the best way. You know, if you're indoors, right. tons of ventilation. And if you're outdoors, you know, you're getting that naturally. So, um, yeah, yeah, teachers are they're really excited. Also, I mean, these are teachers that have never, you know, really gotten to meet their children in person. So it's like the first day of school <laughs> excitement, you know? In a way. Yeah. Very exciting. That's great. I'm glad to hear that they're feeling um, good about it. Katie, what's the turnaround time on the co-verify testing that we're seeing? It's 24 to 48 hours. Um, I <laughs> think it was uh, on the 24 hour side when we did it last week. So yeah, maximum of 48. <clears throat> and from a, from a budget and cost, standpoint the ongoing testing plan that we have we're all budgeted for that it's as what we've already yeah it's in our budget now obviously it wasn't in our beginning of the year budget because yeah. <laughs> but when we it's no different than what we thought when we approved the expenditure for it correct it's in there we have we paid a initial program fee and then um you know we calculated out the costs for the ongoing testing obviously anyone with insurance is um they bill the insurance they, they bill the insurance and then anyone without insurance um we would be covering those costs have we looked into whether there's any state funding or federal funding for the testing for reimbursement for that or is it not a, a big enough expense to be worried about spending um, I'm looking at that? so i mean it's definitely something that is um you know 
potentially going to be funded by the government in, you know, some <laughs> form that hasn't been approved yet. But um, I mean, schools that already got funding this year, you know, CARES Act funding, they can use that funding for those expenses. We as a brand new school didn't qualify for that. Right. But right. The next funding that is potentially available to us, you know, we could put it toward this cost. Okay. Thanks, Katie. Anyone have any um, other questions about the CPP? So the next steps for us in terms of, you know, this whole process is um, once we approve this as a board, um, we would submit it to um, the LA Department of Public Health and uh, the state as well. Um, and we also have a checklist. Um, and then they have seven days to respond to the plan. Um, they give us any revisions um, that they feel like we need. Um, they may not respond, which means that we're good to go. But if they do respond with revisions, then we make the revisions. Um, but that process is basically once we submit, we hear back within seven days. So um, once we approve this, we will be sending it off to them. And uh, hopefully we'll, <laughs> I think it'll be plenty of time for the turnaround. Um, and in in approving this, I would also like to um, move that we approve it with the authorization to Katie and I to make changes as the Department of Health guidance changes, as, as we know it will, because we're going to have to revise this as the guidance changes. It's been changing pretty much every week. So... I'm kind of thinking of it as a, as a living document that will be revised per public health guidance. So if no one has any other questions, I would move to approve the CPP um, and authorize uh, both myself and Katie to um, make needed changes per the Department of Health. Rebecca, just as a clarifying question to that, so are you saying that um, based on recommendations from the CDC, then you as the board chair and Katie as the educational director would sign off together without bringing it back to the board to make those necessary changes because it's going to happen so frequently? I, I just want to make sure I understood. Yeah. That, and did it, I get that right? Yes, exactly. Not not the CDC, but the the public health guidance from oh, okay. both the state and the county um, it. because it's changing weekly um, yeah, yeah, or hourly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As you well know, um, yes. <laughs> just in, in terms of like, I think more little things like, yeah. um, you know, you don't have to have six feet of distance. You have to have four feet of distance or, right. you know, whatever right, right. Yeah. Those, yeah. those kinds of changes. We would just want to reflect the most updated guidance. Got it. I'll second. Thanks, Christy. Uh, Crystal? Approve. Cornell? Approve. Ernesto? Approve. Byron? Approve. Angeline? Approve. Great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we've got item D, contracts over $5,000. We've got WiseTel, our phone system installation, um, so we can have telephones in the classrooms. All the wiring is done. They just need to come back and turn it on, basically. Um, and the contract is for just over 5000 I believe it's 5500 maybe. Mm -hmm. Yes. 5510. Um, we'll have a phone in each classroom, um, voicemail, etc. 
Um, does anyone have any questions about that? I would move to approve this contract then. Second. Crystal? Approve. Uh, Christy? Approve. Ernesto? Approve. Byron? Approve. Angeline? You still there, Angeline? Approve. Thank you. Um, okay, last agenda item is our review of the 2021 Form 700 procedures. And I'm going to hand it over to our dear secretary, Byron, to discuss this matter. Great. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, so everybody should have received from uh, the County Board of Supervisors Executive Office an email with instructions for e-filing of your 2021 uh, Form 700 disclosure. I think everybody, we I don't think we have anybody who wasn't on the board last year. So last year we completed Form 700s. We, we did them on the standard form because we didn't have a conflict of interest code adopted yet. We did them manually. We now have a conflict of interest code uh, that we approved. Uh, I think it was about six months ago, approved by the, the County Board of Supervisors. And we are now all set up to be e-filers through their electronic system. So check your El Rio email. You should have uh, an email from them. There are some instructions there on how to, I think they assume that you have a password, but you probably don't have a password. So you need to do the forgot password thing to set one up. When you log in, uh, you'll, you'll see the correct information on what jurisdiction, what address, things like that are, are all pre-filled in the form. Um, the important distinction from, from the previous Form 700 is because we're now code filers, because there's a conflict of interest code, that what you disclose aligns with uh, the categories in the code. So you should review it again. Uh, I can send a link to everybody to our conflict of interest code if you don't have it from previous minute meetings. But basically, uh, the, the category has to do with whether you have any business real estate, not, you know, non-personal residence real estate within two miles of the school, uh, whether you have in, interests in any uh, entity uh, that does business with the school or, or does the type of or sells the type of products and services that the school uh, purchases, or whether you have any financial relationships or dealings with anybody who works at the school. So you'll, you can see the categories, complete your form. They're due at the absolute latest April 1. Uh, we should try to have them in earlier than that if we, if, if we can. Don't push it to the, to the la very last uh, minute. They are public documents available to the public when you, when you uh, enter in your email address and things. You should use your El Rio uh, school uh, email address for that. And then we will, uh, after we e-file, with the county, we'll, we'll send copies of these forms to uh, LAUSD that requires us to also uh, send, them, send them copies. So no hard copies, just the e-file. If you have any questions uh, about the form, I'm happy to help. You can contact me and go through uh, any questions that you have on, uh, on the disclosures or just the mechanics of the form or if you're just having uh, trouble figuring it out. So any questions, anybody? Did you mention when it's due? A yeah, April April 1. Great. So it will will someone at the school get notified when we're all done? I'm responsible for for tracking it all and I can see in the system, the county okay. system who's uploaded there. Great. Um, so I I'll, you know, I'll, if if, we, if we're if there are any stragglers, I'll you'll be hearing from me and I'll make sure we get them on. <laughs> All right, thanks. You got it. Great. Well, everybody, um, thank you so much. And our next board meeting is scheduled for March 24th, 6 p.m. Um, please let me know uh, if you're not able to make that. Did you say March 24th? I did. Okay, thanks. 
March 24th at 6 p.m. Um, I know that there had been some discussion about wanting to make the meeting earlier. So that's something that we could put on the agenda um, for discussion. Earlier than six, is that what you're saying? Earlier than six, yeah. I don't know if that's of interest to people, but um, if 5 p.m. I, I'll just, I just want to throw out really quickly that it might, it may be challenging for me right now to do before six because of my child care or there is no child care. <laughs> um, so just throwing that out there. Okay. I, I just remember having a hearing talk at one of our last board meetings that was at five, that this was a better time for people. So I just didn't want to, you know, if we, if it's something that we want to change going forward, just let me know and we can put it on the agenda for, for discussion, but maybe, maybe going forward after even this year, we could move it to five. Just something to think about. But for now, our next meeting is March 24th at 6 p.m. And I think that's it. I think I, I can adjourn this meeting. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks, everybody. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.